Hey guys, what's up? It's Roy and Amy here. Today we're going to be talking with you about our top resources for learning Japanese. We've been learning Japanese for about one and a half years now, and it's still not the best. But we have come across heaps of different resources, and we want to make this video to share with you the ones that we found the most helpful and the most useful for learning. So starting off, my number one pick would be the Human Japanese Apps. The Human Japanese Apps are developed by Brian Rack. He's a native English speaker who has learnt Japanese to pretty much fluency. You could think of the Human Japanese Apps as a sort of textbook on your phone, except it's not a traditional textbook because it's actually fun to read. The Human Japanese Apps are a fantastic place to start learning Japanese because they take you from absolutely zero Japanese to a good understanding of basic Japanese grammar. The Human Japanese apps are so good to read because they're written in such a light and humorous tone. I hadn't read a book in probably four to five years before I picked up the Human Japanese apps and I had an absolute blast reading them. The lessons are taught in a logical way where they introduce a concept in one chapter and then in the next chapter, they revisit the same concept that was taught in the previous chapter for you to build upon and not forget about what you previously learned. For example, if you're looking at TEF form, they will do a whole chapter on it. They'll really give you a good introduction to it. And then in later chapters, there'll be a whole big bunch of dialogue and examples so that you can keep building on that knowledge. Everything that's written in Japanese within the app, you can click on and an audio clip will play of a Japanese person speaking. So you can find the Human Japanese apps on both the App Store and for Android phones as well. There's two volumes, volume one and two. You can get both of them for free for the first 10 chapters, but then you will need to pay after that. But honestly, it was a really good investment for us um, and we'd recommend it. All right, so our second recommendation is textbooks. I know what you're thinking, textbooks are super dry and not fun at all. And I would agree with you to a point, but they are annoyingly handy because it gives you all the grammar that you need to know for the language in one spot and it does build on itself really logically and sequentially. If you're a bit of a type A person like me, you'll like that the textbook will take you from learning the katakana and the hiragana all the way through grammar such as the must form and into more harder conjugations of verbs and you'll really like that you can build on each one and have practice. Also it's really great if you're learning for JLPT tests, the Japanese language proficiency test, as there are a lot of textbooks that are specifically designed around the test. The textbooks we used is Genki 1 and Genki 2. They're essentially your stock standard Japanese language learning textbooks and they get the job done. But there's many different alternatives out there and they all essentially do the same thing. So while we also used Genki 1 and Genki 2, we used some additional workbooks to help us really drive home our learning. We used a kanji learning textbook as well as using a Genki 1 and 2 exercise workbook. Now these are great for learning grammar and for really nailing home the kind of logistics of the language, but if you really want to know speaking and listening and be great at that, then our recommendation number three is italki. Italki is an online platform that connects students wanting to learn any language with teachers for video lessons. Personally for me, I would rate italki as probably my number one resource. Unlike Roy, I hadn't had much exposure to Japanese before we started learning and being able to talk with a native speaker and listen to them as well was so good. I really was able to get uh, the pronunciation much better um, and also the tone of the language. So you can either go with a community tutor, which is someone who may not have actual teaching experience or qualifications, or you could go with a professional teacher. Of course, there's gonna be a little bit of a price difference there. For example, we went with a professional teacher at first, and that was up to 40 Australian dollars. Or you can go with a community teacher who may be only about 10 to $14 Australian. Italki was really great for us because it was difficult finding a one-on-one -on -one teacher outside of Japan. Another big plus of doing lessons online is that the teacher puts up their schedule of availability and you can choose when you want to do a lesson with them. This is really great because you're not locked into a specific time each week, like in more traditional tutoring. So moving on and keeping in line with our speaking and listening applications, our fourth recommendation is an app called HelloTalk. 
HelloTalk is an app that lets you connect with a language exchange partner, almost like pen pals. So in our case, we were looking for native Japanese speakers who were also wanting to learn English. But of course, this can be for any languages. So the app is really great because not only does it connect you with people who speak the language that you are learning, but it also has heaps of great features um, which allows you to really be able to correct each other and to learn from each other. So one feature is when they send a message to you, it gives you the option to go through word by word and choose where they may have made a mistake and cross it out and give them the correct way to say it. Not only is there this feature, but you're also able to uh, translate what they've sent to you if you're still a beginner and you're not quite sure what they've said. So there's the option to send written messages, but you can also send them audio messages as well. So you're practicing not only constructing sentences and reading and writing, but also listening and speaking as well. This was the best way that we found to move away from those robotic textbook kind of sentences and more towards a casual conversation. HelloTalk is a free app both on iOS and Android. One thing we would like to mention though is Roy and I both had our own accounts on HelloTalk and we did find that I was approached uh, way more by Japanese guys wanting to speak to me and just approached more overall than Roy was. I did have a few guys wanting to take the conversation off HelloTalk, get my actual social media accounts, things like that. So just be careful there. So moving on to our next point, Satori Reader. Satori Reader is another application developed by Brian Rack. Recently, Komushi-chan, a popular Japanese content creator, did an interview with Brian Rack about Satori Reader. We've linked their video for you to watch. So basically this is an app where there's a whole bunch of stories in Japanese that you can read. The reason why this app is so great is because it's all written in Japanese, but you can click on individual words and sentences and work out what it is in English so you can translate it to Japanese as well as you can click on the whole sentence and it will play an audio clip with a native Japanese speaker. The stories on the app range from things like a girl writing in a diary while she's studying abroad to thrillers to kind of more children's stories that are fantasy driven. And another way I found to move away from more robotic speaking that you find in textbooks is in stories like, for example, this one where the girl goes on a study abroad trip, she's writing in her personal diary, it's um, dropping particles, it's way more casual, and I was able to really pick up on more casual ways of speaking. It would have to be our number one pick for becoming more familiar with reading kanji, as well as uh, sharpening up your listening skills. So just like all the other apps that we've told you about today, it's on your phone, so it's super handy and you can learn wherever you are. There's a free trial for you to become familiar with the stories that Satori Reader provides. However, if you want to continue reading them, you'll have to sign up for the subscription. All right, so moving on to our sixth recommendation. This is just broadly listening media. So things that include podcasts, Netflix series, YouTube videos, etc. On both Spotify and YouTube, we found these really entertaining podcasts that cater from beginner levels all the way to intermediate and advanced. So on Spotify, we've got two, and I've just got my phone here so I can get the names correct, um, but Learn Japanese Pod is probably a one for where you already know some basics and you're looking for something a little bit harder. And then the second one is Japanese Podcast for Beginners. I believe it's called Nihongo Kon Tepe. I loved this one, it's definitely for beginners, but the guy is Japanese and just is so funny, laughs at himself all the time, uh, so it's got about over 100 episodes, I'd really recommend it. Another fun and easy way to learn Japanese is by watching Japanese dramas and anime. For example, Roy and I watched a lot of Terrace House on Netflix together. And now I know what you might be thinking, whoa, watching Japanese dramas and anime, how's that going to help you learn Japanese? But I will say this, that Roy's been watching anime from when he was really, really little and we really noticed a difference when we both formally started learning Japanese together because he was just able to pick up on vocab and sentence structures a lot easier than me and his pronunciation was way better. Mm. So we would recommend this as a method because you don't realize, but when you're sitting there watching these shows, you're just kind of absorbing everything and you'd be surprised on what you pick up on. So those are our top six suggestions for resources for learning Japanese. Um, we did use all of these 
at the same time and interchangeably. So I wouldn't highly recommend one over the other. I think it's good to be able to use different resources and be able to swap and change between uh, practicing your reading, your listening, your grammar or your speaking for example. One thing we do want to point out though is this phenomenon called the Dunning-Kruger effect. The Dunning-Kruger effect is something that's applied to when you're learning anything. And it's essentially a graph that compares what you think you know to what you actually know. So for example, when you're first starting out, you may be really confident. You think, wow, I know so much about this language. This is going to be so good, so easy. And then what happens is you get to this point where you go, oh, wow, I actually don't know that much. There's so much to learn. Your confidence levels goes down and you just crash. And then slowly as you keep going, they slowly start to build back up. You get more confident, you learn more. And for sure, like Roy said, it's a phenomenon that can happen with any kind of learning. For us, we kind of hit this point after we finished reading both Human Japanese Volume 1 and Volume 2. We started to think that we actually were getting a real good grasp on the language, but then we started to see what lies ahead. All of the learning of kanji and practicing our pronunciation and listening, it was just a lot to take in. Guys, it can be discouraging, but please stick in there. Ganbatte. Ganbatte, minasan. Every day, we're still learning Japanese. So if you guys have any great learning resources or any stories to tell about how you've been learning Japanese, please put it down in the comment section below. We'll be reading everything. We can't wait to see you in our next video. Until then, see you later. Hooroo.